All right, we're going to talk about making solutions today. Uh, it's really important that we understand how to make solutions because many of the reactions that we run in chemistry class occur in solution format, or that basically means like in a liquid format. They're coming out in bottles that are made with water. Um, so we need to understand what a, a solution is and how we measure the strength of a solution. So the most common way that we measure the strength of a solution is something called molarity, and that's measuring a concentration. So concentration is a measurement, and it's talking about how much chemical we put in a given amount of space. Now, what we technically call that is the molarity of the solution, and the unit for molarity is capital M. Um, so it's different than MOL. Molarity and mole sound an awful lot alike, but capital M is for molarity. Now, what is similar with molarity and moles is that we do use moles uh, to calculate molarity. We're taking the moles of the solute. That's what's being dissolved. So that's why I have this italicized because that's an actual vocab term per liter of solution made. And the solution is also a vocab term. That's the uh, resulting mixture that occurs. Uh, it's a homogeneous mixture, if you recall, from earlier units of chemistry class. Uh, so ways to think about this is if you have lots of solute, um, if you take a lot of chemical and you dissolve it into a, a space, it's going to be a high concentration, whereas if you take a little amount of chemical per unit space, it's going to be a lower concentration. One way to think about that is if we were to take a dish, uh, like let's say it's sodium chloride. So if this is my dish and it contains a pile of sodium chloride, let's say it's 5 grams, and we put that into a small flask with water versus a big flask with water. If five grams goes into either of those flasks, um, the smaller amount of space means that we're going to have more chemicals shoved in an area. It's more concentrated. A lot like frozen uh, concentrated juice that you can buy from the grocery store. A lot of orange juice in a small amount of space. So when we make solutions, we have some tools that we use to do that. So just quickly, I'm going to point to them on the screen, but then I'll also show you actual tools so that you can see them in a little bit better. Uh, the tools that we use, this is called a volumetric uh, pipette, and it's only good for one volume. So this one's only good for 25 milliliters, and that's because there's only one line marked on that pipette, and that's for 25 milliliters. We have graduated pipettes. These are good for measuring multiple different values, and these are a little bit uh, easier to use, at least for making solutions compared to measuring in a graduate cylinder. And then finally, we have something called a volumetric flask, and these again are only good for one volume, and it's the volume listed on the side because there's only one line uh, drawn on those. So to show you what that looks like in a different setting, <clears throat> here's that example of a volumetric pipette, a 25 mil volumetric pipette. And if you look closely, there's a brown striped line on that pipette. That's the 25 mark. Uh, then we have the graduated pipette. So this has a lot of graduations on it, so we can measure a lot of different values pretty accurately. And then finally, the volumetric flask. So this happens to be a 250 milliliter volumetric flask. And there's an etched on line. You can see that on the neck of the flask. That's the mark that if you fill it up um, with solution, you've made 250 milliliters of solution. So what you might be uh, getting or might be asking yourself is, well, what if I don't want a 250 milliliter solution or a 100 milliliter solution? Well, you need to have a volumetric flask that's appropriate for each solution you're making, at least if you want to make very accurate solutions. So these volumetric flasks and pipettes are very good at measuring accurately to that volume. Um, on the problems that you're going to be asked to complete in class, you're going to uh, narrate the process and you're going to do some math. You're going to put your math answer inside the narrated process. So uh, you can see in question or step number two, that blank will be the amount that you solve for using the math. And we'll talk about the math here in a second. You're going to start by uh, filling that, that volumetric flask partially with distilled water. DI stands for deionized, but it kind of also looks like distilled. Distilled and deionized water are basically the same thing. Um, then you're going to add a certain amount of chemical. Now this could be either a solid chemical that you calculated for, or it could be a liquid chemical that you'd, you'd also calculate for. If it's a solid, of course, you'd measure it on a balance, and if it's a liquid, you'd measure it using either the volumetric 
um, pipette, the graduated pipette, or you could also use a graduated cylinder. And then finally, whoops, your last step is to dilute to the final volume um, on that volumetric flask. Add water so that the meniscus is just hitting at the very bottom. Um, and that's your basic step for making solutions. So now we have three sets of math for making solutions. Uh, it looks like my symbol disappeared on me from last night. But what we have is this. Molarity is equal to moles of solute per liter of solution. So this is the first fact. We also know that moles are equal to the grams that you happen to have divided by the molar mass in grams. So if you happen to have um, 50, 50 grams of sodium chloride, you would divide that by the molar mass in grams of sodium chloride, which is uh, 58.44. So 50 divided by 58.44, that would tell you how many moles of sodium chloride you have. So this is a fact. Moles are also equal to grams over molar mass in grams. So we can substitute in place of this moles, grams divided by molar mass in grams. So you get this full equation. Grams of your solute divided by the molar mass in grams divided by the liters of solution that you have. This gets rearranged into an easier to uh, do math, math-wise at least, uh, equation. Uh, G is equal to molar molarity times the volume of your solution times your molar mass in grams. Now, um, this, this equation works well for us because normally we're solving for the number of grams that we want. We know the molarity of the solution that we'd like to make. We know what size volumetric flask we're going to use, and we can look up the molar mass in grams of that substance. So that's if you have a solid. Um, a lot of our chemicals come in solid format. Some of our chemicals, though, come in solution format. So, for example, we get stock bottles. You might buy a one liter stock bottle from uh, a chemical supplier like Flynn Scientific, for example. So we're trying to figure out how much of that stock bottle we need. Some of the math problems that you're given, it tells you that you have a one liter bottle of stock, but we don't care about the actual volume. That's just saying that's how big the bottle is. We're trying to find that volume of the stock that we need, even if it tells you it's a one liter stock bottle. So you're trying to determine the amount of stock you needed. You're going to know the molarity of that stock because it's going to be, it's going to be written on the back side of the bottle. It's going to say this is a one molar or a seven molar or a 12 molar, whatever it happens to be. You're going to know the molarity of your final solution because something's telling you make this molarity of solution. So you're going to know M2 and it's going to tell you what size volumetric flask you're using. So that's going to be V2. So you use this equation, M1, V1 equals M2, V2, and you would rearrange this solving for V1. The last version of making solutions is if we have two solutions and we're going to mix them together. So you might have two bottles that are partially filled and you just want to mix them together so you have a, a whole lot of solution, but you want to make sure that you know the final concentration of that solution. So what you're going to take is the molarity and the volume that you have of the first solution, add that together with the molarity times the volume of the second solution, divide that by um, both volumes added together. So really if you take molarity times volume, that's giving you moles, and if you take molarity times volume, that's giving you moles. So you're taking your total number of moles and dividing by the total volume, which is uh, the definition of capital M molarity. So I hope that helps explain how to make solutions and what a solution actually is. Uh, you're going to want to use these three equations, so if you need to go back and rewind and write them down, you're going to want to use those on uh, a worksheet that we happen to have called Making Solutions. And um, you're going to see that the problems on that worksheet are grouped using those three different formulas. So the first groupings of problems are the first formula, second or the second formula, and the last grouping are going to be this formula. Hope that helps.